Hello everyone, I'm Svetlin Nakov from Softunic Global and I'm here for the next episode from my Dev Concept series. In this video, I cover the essential concepts that developers and IT professionals should know about the HTTP protocol. The HTTP protocol is used when a web browser and apps communicate over the internet. In this lesson, I explain the HTTP protocol basics some HTTP client tools for developers like the Network Inspector and Postman, the difference between the GET and POST request methods, the HTTP request structure like the request line, request headers and body, and the HTTP response structure, the response status code like 200 OK or 400 for not found, the response headers and the optional response body, and also some important headers uh, like content type and content disposition, as well as content length. Of course, each of these topics will be explained with many examples, and I'm sure that by the end of this video, you will feel comfortable with the main topics surrounding HTTP. If you find this video tutorial helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more similar learning videos. Okay, let's get started. Let's start our HTTP journey with an introduction to the HTTP protocol, the request response model, the client server model, and how it works in internet applications over HTTP. Along with the role of the web server and the web client, the concepts of front-end and back-end and their interaction using HTTP. HTTP is the main internet protocol used to communicate between web servers, which host the websites and, the, and server site com software components, and web clients, such as web browser and mobile apps, which display the information to the users and interact with them. HTTP comes from Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's a protocol originally created for transferring HTML, CSS, images, and other web resources within the global distributed information system called World Wide Web, or just web. The web consists of all websites in internet, which are accessed via the HTTP protocol. Later, HTTP was extended to a general purpose client server protocol for the internet and was widely used for transferring almost anything over the internet. Text, images, documents, audio streaming, video streaming, chat messages, and many others. Let's first explain what is a protocol. A communication protocol is a set of rules which defines how two or more parties are talking to each other. It defines the format of the messages exchanged and their semantics. The protocols in programming are languages used to communicate between machines. Like in the human languages, protocols have syntax, which specifies the structure and commands, and semantics, which specifies their meaning. HTTP is text-based client server protocol for the internet. Text-based means that the messages which are exchanged are human-readable text, not binary data, such as JPEG images. Client server means that the communication takes place between a server, a software which stores the data and provides it upon request, and the client, a software which reads and visualizes the data from the server. We shall explain the client server model later in more detail a bit later. HTTP is mostly used to transfer web resources, such as HTML files, images, styles, and documents. For example, when you open a website, the web browser connects to the web server hosting the requested site and the request and it requests the URL that you have entered in the browser's location bar via the HTTP protocol. In most cases, the web server returns an HTML document 
that contain uh, references to other resources such as CSS styles, images and scripts which are downloaded by the web browser in subsequent HTTP requests. HTTP follows the request response model uh, which means that the HTTP client software, the web browser in most cases, requests resources from the HTTP servers, the web servers, and get these res resources as response. Clients requests and servers respond to the requests. This is how it works. HTTP does not directly allow a website to send data to the clients unless this data is explicitly requested. And this is perfectly normal. Users don't want a website to open when it's not requested. What shall happen, for example, if a spam website appears while you're working on your computer? The HT protocol lies on the request response paradigm and cannot open a website unless someone has asked to open it. The HTTP protocol relies on unique resource locators, URLs, like HTTPS column slash slash softunit.org. When a, re a resource is downloaded from the web server, it comes with metadata, such as content type and encoding, which helps in visualizing the resource correctly. The HTTP protocol is stateless by design, which means that it does not preserve a state. Each HTTP request is independent of the others. Stateful HTTP conversation can be implemented by extra effort using cookies, custom header fields, web storage, or other techniques. Let me show you another useful tool for developers who deal with the HTTP protocol, the Postman HTTP client. Postman is an HTTP client tool for developers. Web developers use it for composing and sending HTTP requests and analyzing the HTTP response from the server, for testing, for debugging server APIs, for researching how to use certain service API, and for resolving technical issues during the software development. With Postman, you can create an HTTP request, send it to the web server, view the HTTP response, and generate a source code to execute the HTTP request in many languages, such as JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, Python, PHP, and many others. Now let's see an example with Postman. Uh, we can send an HTTP request to retrieve the issue number one from the ASP.NET Core project at GitHub using the GitHub API, which is accessible via the HTTP protocol. We create a new request uh, and name it get GitHub issue. And uh, we save the request in Postman and uh, we choose HTTP method guest for this request. Uh, and we enter the following URL for the HTTP request. HTTPS, comma, slash, slash, api.github.com, slash, repo, slash, dot net, slash, ASP.NET Core, slash, issues, slash, one. Uh, and we click the send button. It, and the, the web server at api.github.com response with a long JSON object uh, holding a detailed information about the requested issue. We can view the code example uh, for sending this HTTP request in JavaScript, C Sharp, Java or other uh, programming language. Uh, we open the generate code snippet uh, dialog window by clicking on the code button and we select HTTP to see the HTTP request. We can select JavaScript fetch uh, to see how to invoke this request from um, JavaScript client side JS application running in the web browser. We can also select uh, Java to 
see a, a sample Java code for invoking the same request from Java. You can play more with Postman uh, and uh, during the exercise and homework uh, sessions and I hope you will like it. I'm sure you will find with ease how to install the Postman client on your computer. Um, and in case you want to explore more HTTP tools, I could recommend this. Insomnia Core REST Client. It is a client HTTP tool for developers uh, like Postman. Uh, also, Postwoman. <laughs> it's a web-based Postman-like HTTP client tool running directly from the web without installation. <laughs> Did you notice the T's in the name? It's not a Postman, it's a Postwoman. You can play with it at postwoman.io. Um, this is the tool. We can click the send button and we see the response here. In this section, I will explain what's inside the HTTP request. The request line, the request methods, the request headers, and the request body. I will discuss the main HTTP request methods cat, post, put, patch, delete, options, head, and others, and how they work. I will examine a sample HTTP request to get a better understanding how it works, and I will explain the internals, why we need the content land header and content encodings and other internal details. Let's get into it. HTTP defines methods to indicate the desired action to be performed on the identified resource. The most often used HTTP methods are GET, POST, PUT, DELETE, and PATCH. The GET method retrieves uh, a specified resource. It is used to download a web page, CSS file, script, document, or other resource from a website. For example, if you open your favorite new site, its uh, content will be downloaded using HTTP GET requests. GET can retrieve a list of resources, for example, all the news from the front page of a news website, or get a single resource, for example, a single news article. The POST method is used to create or store a resource at the web server. Remember that POST creates something new at the web server. It modifies the state at the server side. For example, when you log in uh, with your username post password at the website, the login form uses POST request to send your credentials to the server. And if the login data is valid, the server creates a new session and sends uh, the session identifier as a cookie. And we shall learn about cookies later when we study web programming. Another example of HTTP POST is when you enter and submit your shipping address in an e-commerce application. PUT is used to update or replace an existing resource. The HTTP PUT method is used in some applications to replace an existing resource with a new version of this resource. For example, HTTP PUT can be used to change the shipping address in an e-commerce application. Delete is used to delete or remove an existing resource. An example of HTTP delete is for deleting an item from the shopping cart of, uh, in an e-commerce web application. The patch uh, method updates an existing resource partially. It is used to modify a field uh, of given object. An example of HTTP patch request is for updating the quantity of an order item in the, shipping, in the shopping cart in an e-commerce web application. The HTTP head method retrieves the resource headers without the resource itself. Head is used rarely, for example, to check for modifications at the server side. The four most important operations for most applications are get, post, put, and delete, the so-called CRUD operations. 
CRUD is an abbreviation from Create, Read, Update, Delete. And it's usually implemented by apps and APIs which manage persistent data. Most applications support at least these four CRUD operations for the objects they store, edit and manage. For example, if you have a phone book app, you will need at least the following basic operations. View all the entries from the phone book. View a certain phone book entry. Add a new phone book entry. Modify existing phone book entry and delete the phone book entry. These are essentially the classical CRUD operation. HTTP supports uh, a few more methods which are used rarely in special situations. Connect is used to open a two-way socket connection to the remote web server. A socket connection can overcome the limitations of the HTTP protocol and its request response model through lower level communication. The options method is used to describe the communication options for, speci for a specified resource. For example, in some situations, the web client asks the web server using an HTTP option request if it is allowed from a security perspective to request a certain resource. This is called a cross-origin request or course. The HTTP trace method is designed for diagnostic purposes during the development and is used very rarely. Now let's give a full example of an HTTP request. HTTP requests consist of request line, request headers and request body. The request starts with the HTTP request line. This is the command we send to the server. This line says what resource we want to get or process. The request line starts with the request method, in our case, get, followed by the request URI. Uh, this is the resource path relative to the server's root, followed by the HTTP version string, for example, HTTP slash 1.1, followed by a new line, CR plus LF. In most computer systems, the new line consists of two characters, CR, the carriage return, the ASCII code 13, and LF, uh, line feed, uh, the ASCII code 10. This is the new line format used in the HTTP protocol. Web browsers use URLs, but HTTP uses URIs to address the resources. What's the difference? URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator and it describes the full unique address for a resource in Internet, which consists of protocol plus host plus resource path. For example, https column slash slash softuni.org slash about. The URL is what we type in the browser's location bar. URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier and it holds a full or relative unique path to a resource, for example, slash about. When we request a resource over HTTP, we specify the relative URI of the resource in the request line and we specify the host name in the request headers. Both relative URI and host name come from the URL we want to access. At the next few lines, the HTTP re request headers are given. Uh, headers specify specific parameters about the requested resource. An important header is the host header, holding the requested resource. If we have several websites on the same web server, for example, softunit.org and learn.softunit.org, the host header will tell the server which website to access. The other header specifies settings uh, about uh, like what kind of content the client can accept, uh, 
and understands, for example, only HTML or any content, what is the preferred language such as English or Russian uh, that the client wants to use, what kind of compression the client understands, uh, for example, gzip and deflate, what are the client web browser's brand and version, uh, encoded as the so-called user agent identifier and other parameters. The header section in the HTTP requests ends by an empty line, CR plus LF twice. After the request headers, the request body comes. It can hold anything, for example, URL encoded data or JSON object or binary data. The request body can be also empty, which is typical for the HTTP GET requests. Let's perform a live example with Postman. We want to open the URL uh, HTTP uh, api.github.com slash repo slash dotnet slash spnet core slash issue slash one. Uh, we can create a get request and we enter the URL we want to retrieve and then we click the send button and Postman executes the HTTP request and visualizes the HTTP response. Uh, from the web server. It's a JSON object describing the retrieved GitHub issue. Now let's review another example, a simple HTTP POST request. We want to create a new issue at GitHub using HTTP POST. But the GitHub API requires authentication to make changes and this is complicated. Instead of using the GitHub API, we shall send a simple request to the Postman Echo service, which is a free service designed for testing purposes. It simply returns the data posted to it. The URL for the Postman Echo service uh, for HTTP POST is the following https com slash slash postman dash echo dot com slash post. Our sample HTTP post request hosts a request line uh, plus headers plus body. The HTTP request line holds the method post uh, plus the relative request URI slash post plus HTTP slash 1.1, the protocol version. The headers specify the host uh, the host uh, which comes from the URL In our case, postman-echo.com, uh, also the content type, uh, which is application JSON, and few other settings, uh, like the size of the HTTP body in bytes, uh, the content length header. The request body mm, holds a JSON object which describes the new GitHub issue in a simplified form. We can send the POST request from the previous slide using the Postman HTTP client tool. Uh, we open Postman and create a new request. Uh, we select a method POST from the drop down and we put the URL https postman echocom slash post. We put the JSON code uh, from the previous uh, slide 
in the request body tab and we send the request. The response from the HTTP server is displayed below. It's a JSON object which holds the information about the request. It's time to explain the HTTP responses, their response status lines, headers and body content in more detail. I recall that the HTTP protocol operates on the request response model. The web client sends HTTP requests to the web server and the web server replies with an HTTP response. The request and the response messages follow a certain text-based format defined by the HTTP specification. I already explained what's inside the HTTP requests. Now let's review what's inside the HTTP responses. Let's start with a sample HTTP response. It consists of three parts, response status line, response headers, and response body. The HTTP response status line starts with the protocol version, uh, followed by the response status code, followed by a human readable text explanation of the status code. The status codes tells the client whether the requested operation was successful or not. It may report success with status code, code 200 or error with status code 400 or 500 or other. There are many status codes specified in the HTTP standard and we shall discuss them later in detail. After the HTTP status line, the HTTP response headers come. The response headers provide metadata about the returned resource or the returned error, such as content type, content encoding, uh, content size in bytes, uh, content loss modification date, and many others. After the response headers and the empty separator line, uh, the HTTP response body comes. This is the requested resource, the content returned by the server. It can be a text or a binary data or can be empty. In our example, the web server returns an HTML page. Let's discuss in more detail the HTTP response status codes. HTTP status codes are three digit integer numbers and the first digit serves for grouping the status codes. Status codes starting with two indicate a successful operation. Uh, the most used HTTP response status code is 200 OK which means that the requested resource has been successfully retrieved and returned. This is what the server returns, for example, when you successfully open a news article from a news website. Status code 201 created means that a new resource has been created successfully. For example, a new user was registered. Status 204, no content, means that the request was successful, but there is nothing to return. For example, a chat message was sent successfully to certain user and this operation returns just done. St status code 204. Uh, status code starting with three are used for redirection to another URL. Uh, status code 201 uh, found, uh, move permanently, is used for permanent redirection to another URL. For example, when a website changes its domain name, your domain name is permanently redirected to the new domain using a 301 permanent redirect. The status code 202 found is used for to temporarily redirect to another URL. For example, the slash hot offer location on a website may be redirected to a different offer each week. Status code 304 not modified is returned after a conditional HTTP GET, which says, I have this resource from yesterday, please return it only if you have a newer version. 
This is a mechanism used by websites and web browsers for caching images and multimedia content that rarely change. The response from a conditional HTTP GET is 204 not modified, uh, no newer version or 200 uh, OK when a newer version is found. Status codes starting with 4 indicate a client error. Uh, such as bad request or not found. 400 bad request uh, means that the Quan has sent an invalid request. For example, to view a news article, uh, the article ID should be specified. If the browser requests a news article without specifying an ID, the web server may return 400 bad request. Status code 201 unauthorized uh, is returned when the resource is available, but it can be accessed after authentication only. For example, a website could serve specific content to its registered users after successful login. Status code 203 forbidden is returned when the resource is restricted for the current user. For example, the admin interface in many websites is available for users with role administrator and for the other users, the access is 403 forbidden. Status code 404 not found means that the requested resource is missing. This can happen when the user types an incorrect resource URI or after an existing resource is deleted from the server. The not found status code is used very often and experienced internet users know it very well. The status code 409 conflict is returned when the requested operation cannot be performed due to conflict. For example, when a new user is registered, if the specified username or email is already taken, the server may return 409 conflict. The status codes starting with 5 indicate a server error, such as service and available. Um, the status code 400, uh, internal server error, means that the server has crashed while processing your request. This is the most common server-side error message in the world of software development. 500 internal server error um, is caused either by a bug in the software at the web server uh, at the server site or by an incorrect invocation made by the client. For example, if the client requests a user to be deleted, but the user has pending orders, the server may not be able to delete the user and may return 500 internal server error. 501 uh, un not implemented may be returned when certain functionality uh, is not yet implemented by the server side software. It's under development. 503 service unavailable may be returned when a component of the server side is not ready. For example, if the database server is down. There are tens of HTTP response codes, but the most important are the ones that I explained briefly here. You can learn about the other status codes in the official HTTP 1.1 standard, the RFC 7231. Many HTTP headers play an important role in modern web development. Now I want to focus on the content type and content disposition headers. The content type and content and the content disposition headers specify how to process the data in the HTTP request or in the HTTP response body. These headers can be used both in the HTTP requests and in the HTTP responses. For example, the header content type application slash JSON specifies a JSON encoded data, a JSON object. 
By default, the UTF-8 encoding is used. The content type text slash HTML char set equals UTF-8 specified an H HTML document with UTF-8 encoding. Note that the encoding or the char set specified in the HTTP headers has a higher priority than the encoding specified in the head of the HTML document using the meta char set HTML tag. The next example combines the content type and the content disposition headers in the HTTP response to inform the web browser that the returned resource is a PDF document. Um, which has the name uh, financial-report2020.pdf and should be downloaded as attachment. Not to be opened directly in the web browser, but to be saved as an external file. Most web browsers will process the response from this example by downloading the file in the downloads folder on the client device. Uh, in the HTTP requests, the content type header specifies what kind of data the client sends to the server. For example, a JSON document or URL encoded form data or a plain text document. When the data is text-based, the char set encoding can also be specified. For example, UTF-8 or Windows 1251. And this is highly recommended because wrong encoding may result in broken and unreadable text stored in the database. The value of the content type header is a media type identifier like text slash HTML, application slash JSON, image slash JPEG, application slash VND dot MS dash Excel and many others. The list of officially standardized media types and their officially assigned uh, media type identifiers are maintained by the internet organization IANA at uh, IANA.org slash assignments slash uh, media dash types. These are the content types defined by IANA.org. The content type header in the HTTP responses specifies what kind of data the server returns to the client. For example, an HTML document or a JPEG image. For text-based data like HTML or text documents, the char set can also be specified such as UTF-8 or Windows 1251. Specifying explicitly the character uh, encoding is highly recommended uh, and helps visualizing correctly the return document. When web browsers open a website, by default they use the character encoding from the content type response header when it is available or their default encoding when the char set is missing in the HTTP headers. This is an example of small HTTP conversation which consists of HTTP request followed by a corresponding HTTP response. The HTTP request uses a get method to download the resource at the following URL https com slash slash softunit.org slash curriculum. Uh, the relative request URI is slash curriculum. It is specified in the HTTP request line. The host comes from the URL and it is softuni.org. It is specified in the host header uh, of the request. The user agent, uh, which is the web browser 
identifier is said to be Mozilla slash 5.0 and no other headers are set. Uh, these are enough and the HTTP request is properly composed. The HTTP response uh, from the web server returns status code 200 OK. Uh, which means that the requested resource is found and it will be returned in the response body. The date header shows uh, the date and time at the web server at the time when the HTTP response is created. The server header shows information about the server software used to process the HTTP request, the web server, in this example, this is the Microsoft's web uh, server used by uh, the ASP.NET uh, app behind the website at uh, softuni.org. The header content length uh, indicates the size of the returned resource in bytes. Mm. Using this value, the web browser could visualize a download progress bar um, uh, with increasing percentages over the time for large files or documents. After the header, an empty line comes and then the requested resource is returned in the HTTP response body. Let's see in the web browser uh, this uh, in the network monitoring tool. Open the URL, well, well, wait for page to load. Now press F12 to open the network monitoring in Chrome DevTools. Um, press the reload button, the reload button uh, to load the current page again with the network activity recording. Uh, we see many HTTP requests performed by the web browser um, to open this page. The browser downloads HTML code, JavaScript files, images, icons, fonts and other resources. We can inspect them one by one. Uh, this sample illustrates uh, what happens when an internet user opens a website. The browser executes a sequence of steps. From the URL, uh, from the URL, uh, the web server's IP address is extracted and the browser establishes a TCP socket with the web server. Mm. If HTTPS is used, um, a TLS security layer is initialized and an encry encryption channel is established. Using the connection with the web server, uh, the browser sends a sequence of HTTP requests and visualizes uh, the responses from the web server. Usually the first downloaded resource is the HTML document. Um, corresponding to the site's URL. The return document is processed by the browser and all the style scripts, images and other referenced resources are extracted. And for, for each of the referenced resource, a separate HTTP request is sent to the web server uh, over the already established connection. When the resources are loaded, uh, the HTML document is rendered using these resources, these scripts, styles, images, fonts, icons, and others, and the user can see the website. Uh, a typical business website today makes uh, 50 to 100 HTTP requests to load and display its front page. Uh, you can track these requests using the Chrome DevTools or other HTTP traffic. 
in our example we have more than 30 uh, requests to open the soft uni curriculum page hey did you like this lesson do you want more join the learners community at softuni.org subscribe to my youtube channel to get more more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts, and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get help for free from mentors and meet other learners. And this is all free. Yes, completely free. So join now at softunit.org. Meanwhile, you can check out my other videos from the Dev Concept series or from the Code Lesson series, where I'll explain and demonstrate many concepts and technologies from the software development profession uh, with live coding exercises and hands on WAPs. Type in the comments below if you want to see some of your favorite topics in this channel. Goodbye, see you in my next video.